Hi everyone, James here from F9 Audio and welcome to F9 Tracks Beach House. Now, if you're new to F9 and you're new to our Tracks Advanced Templates, let me quickly show you around. This is what you get in this release. Two of these fully functioning DAW projects heavily built from multi-sampled instruments and MIDI parts. Now, that means they are far more customizable than any other type of sample pack. Unlike static loops, you can actually dig in and start to change the notes, and that's incredibly powerful. There are some audio parts in there as well, but wherever possible, we are running this with multi-sampled instruments, drum and effects menus running MIDI. This release also comes with a three gigabyte sound library set up as live racks that you can easily install into your own system. But enough of me just talking, let's just dive straight in. This is the first project and it's called Riptide. <laughs> And I hope by scrolling through some of the actual parts of the page there, you can see just how much of this is running with MIDI. We've also got a section where we drop to half time just for the middle part. <laughs> As you can hear, there is quite a lot going on there. And one of the reasons for such a high track count is that we're moving between these different feelings or almost emotions throughout the track. And all of this is laid bare for you to investigate. Now, before we actually dive into the individual specifics of the track, I just want to draw your attention to this section on the right, part of the live lessons functionality of Ableton. And here we've got a whole selection of session notes that will talk you through different elements of the track, the music, the production, and the mix. They've been loved by our F9 users over the years and we really encourage you to have a good look at that because it will show you pretty much how we've put this track together. We're going to be doing this walkthrough in Ableton Live 9 because it's the most compatible with our screen capture software but please note this release is fully compatible with Live 9, Live 10, Standard or Suite editions. So now let's start to break this down and first off let's go and look at the beats. So a really nice crisp set of core drum sounds there. Let me just play you the track a little bit later on when some loops come and join in. So they're adding that kind of spice that only loops can. We've also got some really interesting loops happening in the background, for example this. So there's some general effects adding some atmosphere to things, but we'll go into detail in that in a minute. First of all, I just want to take you back up to the top of the track and show you these two sidechain trigger tracks. Now, these are just MIDI parts and they're just triggering a basic sine wave. You can't actually hear them at the moment because we have their master output set to sends only. So they're not connected to the master bus. Let me just flip that over so you can temporarily hear the output and you'll see what I mean. This is the first one, it's a quarter beat, so one beat on every quarter note.
So why are we using a sine wave and not a kick drum? Well, any sound can trigger a compressor. It's just literally level detection. But the great thing about using a sine wave inside a simpler, it means that we can tailor the decay portions or we can tailor the envelope response of the actual sound, which will then trigger the compressor in a certain way. Now, here's the second side chain that's actually being set to fire only once per bar. So why is that useful? Well, if I come down to this heavily side-chained piano part and solo it, you'll hear what's going on. So there are two compressors here, both firing off completely different side chains. This first compressor is off our one bar trigger, so it's nice and slow, and you can see the gain reduction slowly coming back up as the tail of the sine wave disappears. And then secondly, it's got a faster quarter beat trigger, uh, a standard kind of house trigger, I suppose, for a side chain on a separate compressor. So now let me quickly stick everything back into this production and you'll hear it at work. So our dual sidechain plot is allowing us maximum flexibility when we're processing those atmospheric kind of sounds. Now this is what I love about tracks. There is not a single other sample pack that can teach you that. There may be tutorials that can teach you that, but as you go away, you may not understand how everything's rooted. Here you can see exactly how we're doing things. Now, as all of the drum patches are set up as sound menus, it means you can quickly audition different sounds for the different parts by simply changing the pitch. Here I've just dropped a MIDI pitch control uh, onto the track that's containing the kick drum, and we can audition different sounds. One thing that's really important within house rhythm programming is getting all the kind of ghost sounds, the, go the sounds that will be heavily swung, sit on the divisions that will respond to swing. I think we're using uh, MPC uh, values of about 61% for this production, and we've got a couple of sounds that are uh, picking up some of these actual accents. One is this skip hit patch at the top, and another one is an offbeat snare. Let me just put the metronome on so you can hear it in context. And now let's play them in the full drum part. So now let me play you the transition between the house section and uh, the half time section. <laughs> As you can hear, we've given quite a long gap between the actual main part of the track and this half time section. And the great thing with about this kind of beach house orientated music, it's more kind of listening, poolside listening. It doesn't always have to work on a dance floor, so you can be an awful lot more creative effectively. Um, now, one thing I do want to draw your attention to, we've got little bits of percussion really kicking out here, particularly these timbale fills. <laughs> Now, they are actually audio files, but we've given you plenty of choice. I think we've tried to make nearly every single hit slightly different. <laughs> but 
But we've also got this really interesting patch labelled Subway Percussion. Now, this was us taking a great big box of percussion down to one of the massive subways in Brighton that is right by the sea and actually recording the results of us whacking certain bits in there. And this subway's got this amazing natural reverb that you can hear on those samples, but also you've got the ambience of the of Brighton Beach somewhere back in the in the distance there. So it's quite a unique set of percussion and it's really brought some additional atmospheres to this piece. Speaking of atmosphere, there's two patches I really want to show you here. Uh, the first is this effects loops. Now this is a menu of a whole load of different effect sounds. <laughs> Um, but there are a couple of Foley loops in there, and that's what we're using just on this simple trigger here to spin some atmosphere in. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but let me just put that back into the rhythm track. And now I'm going to take it in and out. Now, it never ceases to amaze me just how well those kind of sounds work. I think as human beings, we live in the natural world where there's tons of noise pollution in almost every environment that we're in. So we like to hear a little bit of grunge and a little bit of stuff going on in the background. I think it's one of the reasons why we love record crackle and tape noise so much. Now, taking that concept one stage further, we've got these collection of atmospheric hits. Now, we are using these almost as symbols or fallers within the track. And they're far more interesting and useful than just standard symbols or white noise. Now, all of the sounds in this pack are racked up. And uh, when we come down to the rack controls here, you'll see we've got a nice long release on this particular sound. Um, but also, the high pass is set quite high. Let me just turn this all the way down and I'll play you some of the sounds in this patch. Now we're also using a different version of this patch with a much a slower envelope rise and some automation to actually use these as uplifters as well as down. So just one set of sounds has been particularly useful in generating transitions. So now onto the halftime section itself and it's revolving around this halftime loop. <laughs> Really nice and crusty. It's bolstered up by this halftime kick. Some additional snares from our studio um, Oberheim DMX that's been passed through a big reverb. Some live tambourine. And a great little collection of the percussion patches. There is another percussion patch that's used in here as well as our subway percussion. Now add all that together and we get a really nice and interesting halftime rhythm section. But it transitions perfectly back into the full time section at the end. And just at that point, all of these things come together, the different percussion elements, all of the grunge loops, all of those risers and the timbale fills to just bring us back into that house section. Now, how many sample packs can show you that? This is what we think we've got that's completely unique about all of these releases, our ability to transfer this kind of production technique and knowledge to you guys. Okay, so moving on now to the bases in this production, and we've got a number of patches in operation. The first is this low bass. The second is a square bass patch that's actually occupying the kind of upper mid and it's got quite a degree of punch to it. But one thing I would say is have a look at this EQ curve. Um, the reason we're taking so much of the low end off is that we've got our low bass patch occupying that. 
And as they're playing pretty much the same rhythm when they come together... This kind of processing will make sure that we don't overload the sub end of the production and allows us to run both the bass patches together. There's one final patch helping us glue all this together and that's this reverse styled bass patch. Now, this patch is actually a completely raw set of oscillator samples. So we have full synthesis control on this patch, so we've applied a filter within the simpler and then a filter envelope to actually uh, create that rise. And then we've applied some heavy EQ once again just to help it sit within the track. And you get the effect of that note sliding into the next note within the pattern. Within the live racks that are included in the three gigabyte sound library, none of these high pass filters are present. We've actually EQ'd and processed every single sound to work on an individual basis. So quickly now, just looking at the other bass patches, we've got this sound. And that's actually just in one section playing a little fill in. But it's a very fashionable sound at the moment, so we wanted to get that in there as an actual patch. We've also got a great drone bass. And in the half time section, or and actually in the breakdowns, we've got a live bass part. And it's been EQ'd deliberately to sound really dubby. Here it is in the track. Now, it's from a five-string bass, and a five-string bass has an extra string beneath the normal low E on a bass guitar, and it allows you to get much subbier tones out of it. Now, obviously, that's not much use to you guys, so we've actually multi-sampled that patch and made it available here as a uh, simpler patch. And what I'm going to do is just mute the original live bass part there. Just going to drop the filter a little bit on this. That's better, so it really starts to growl. And I'll show you how we can just play that patch in. So a really nice collection of bass instruments there. One of the key keyboard instruments is this main Rhodes patch. And as you can see here, it's just a MIDI patch playing back these notes. Once again, all of the chords are on show so you can see how we're voicing all this. And we also talk about all of these chord voicings in the internal session notes that you get with this pack. Any electric piano tends to be a very versatile instrument. And that provides a real problem when you're actually sampling it. So it's our job to provide you with very useful patches that are going to work in certain scenarios. And this patch... is specifically designed to work in club music. So its bottom end is under control so it can fit with bass. It's very percussive and actually quite a short decay. We've got some reverbs here just on auxiliary sends to add some atmosphere. But it's also quite great as a solo instrument. Let me just play over the top of this for you. So as well as just honking out chords there, which fit beautifully in house productions, by the way, it can be used perfectly as a solo instrument. OK, moving on to uh, the actual normal pianos. This is one of my favourite patches in the pack.
And that piano patch was sampled with all of that kind of atmosphere and EQ, that kind of pushed lo-fi EQ. So it makes it very handy at just picking certain notes out like we have at this particular part. Let's hear that in the track. We've also got a much more standard grand piano patch. that's EQ'd heavily here to fit into a club. Uh, once again, we've got an awful lot at the bottom end off. Let me just pull some of that back in. Um, one of the reasons we're using so many high pass filters here is that the bass end on this track is deliberately massive. So we need to keep out of the way of it with the other instruments. This is what the piano sa uh, patch sounds like without that filter. We've got another electric piano patch that's deliberately heavily processed and ambient. And modulation is really the key to getting electric piano sounds right. Here we only just have to put a little bit of extra processing on it because most of it is burnt into the actual sampling. And it's just picking out these top chords. Let me play that in the production. So we've got a selection of different piano sounds there that have all been processed and sampled carefully to work together. And they're really creating a rich chord bed for part of this production. Now let's go to the other side of it. So I really wanted to create a juxtaposition here. So when it goes into this section, it's almost darkness and light. We've had the richness of the chords before, but then we want to drop into this tougher section. And this is a selection of the effects and melodic hits menus that we set up for this. So we've got a whole selection of sounds set up across a MIDI keyboard. <laughs> and some effects loops that we heard earlier. Now, these are just being triggered by the MIDI notes that you can see here on the page. So once again, you have full flexibility. You can do whatever you want with these menu patches and build your own riffs, rhythms, etc., etc. But they are being joined here just by an audio file at the bottom, which is a kind of tortured and twisted diva note that's actually then been gated and affected afterwards. <laughs> And it just adds a really nice old school feel just to that breakdown section. Now, let's just turn all the solos off and hear what they sound in context. <laughs> There's quite a few other synth patches in this production. This is one of my favorites from the half time section. It's very soft, but it still cuts through. But we don't have time to go through every single individual patch. Let's now move on to the second project called Driftwood.
So this is without doubt our most ambitious tracks project to date. It's got an absolutely enormous track count as you can see and that's because once again we're slipping between different styles. In particular we've got these drops down to a breakbeat section. <laughs> But we're also moving between bass plots. Here's the subbier one. The slightly funkier section in the middle. And the main uplifting section at the end. And there is one very good reason for this complication. Well, two, actually. First of all, we wanted to show you how you can move between different production styles within a song and really grow an arrangement so that it feels like a real piece of music. This sometimes gets lost in the world of copy and paste that we all live in, that producers are just shifting one section to another into the same place, blah de blah, blah just move stuff around, add a tambourine, that's it. You can actually change styles, and it makes music, or to change production technique a little bit during a piece, and it really makes your music stand out. Also, one of the other main reasons is we wanted to provide you with as many different patches in one project as possible. There are only two uh, patches in this release, and it's priced accordingly, but we thought by moving, in, uh, moving all of the bass sounds uh, in this way, we could provide you with a larger amount of patches, so more bang for your buck. Okay, let's start to have a look at this, and I don't think we really need to go through the main house section of drums, I want to concentrate straight away on the break beats. So here is our break section and it revolves around this main break audio file. And what's vital about this whole piece is that the snares don't fit where they normally should be. So for example, the snare of this uh, actual break should be on the part I'm highlighting now, but it's slipped back. So you get this wonderful broken feel. That is joined with another little break. It's kind of more atmospheric, but it is triggering on the same rhythm section. And there's a tiny bit of glitch work just going on in the background too. Add all those three together and this is what you get. But please note, if you're ever into making these kind of things, you must underpin these breaks with kicks like this. And that interplay between the bass end and the, uh, the mids and the tops of the breaks is what really makes this jump out. Add that together with some subby bass and the musical parts and you've got an excellent atmospheric breakdown. Now, please note, we are not making nosebleed drum and bass here. This is effectively a chilled house track and the beats need to work accordingly. So for me, the rhythms are kind of referencing some of the great jazz drummers of the uh, late 70s. Now, bearing in mind, those were the drummers that are the most sampled in any kind of break, whether it be hip hop, breakbeat, jungle, uh, drum and bass, whatever. And we are still referencing some of the brilliant rhythm work that they did back then. I always encourage you to go and check out the work of some of these drummers, the Clyde Stubblefields, the Bernard Purdy's, all of those pioneers that really brought music forward. It's probably never, ever going to happen again. Now, just to add a little bit of glue between that and the 4-4 section, we've got a straightened version of the uh, break just with a tambourine and a snare. And that's working on top of the 4-4 sections. <laughs> You can hear in the background on both of those break sections that there's a tambourine part holding it together. And it's almost an essential ingredient of breakbeat. Now, we've recorded those loops in, but we've got a great tip for you. Um, we're lucky enough to have a pair of really nice Coles ribbon mics. They can be incredibly expensive, but we recently got hold of one of these. Uh, it's from Thomann. It's the T-Bone ribbon microphone, and it costs only £85.71, which for a ribbon microphone is uh, great value. The tambourine parts you're hearing on this production were recorded with that microphone. 
Ribbon microphones are slightly dulled on the top end, so when you put percussion instruments through them, they automatically do the processing that you normally would do on a tambourine. I don't know if any of you have ever recorded a tambourine through, say, a dynamic or a condenser mic, but it's incredibly bright and piercing, and you have to tame it all. Record through a uh, ribbon mic like this, or even a cheaper one here. Uh, this one's got an even duller frequency response, the RB100. And look at that, £57, £66 Euros just for a ribbon mic. As long as your audio interface has enough mic gain, because all ribbon mics need high gain, these can be an incredibly worthwhile investment if you're recording your own percussion parts in. And now we're talking about percussion, let's have a look at them in this actual track. Let's just solo the percussion that's in on the main section. And you'll see there are a mixture here of MIDI notes triggering those percussion patches that we saw earlier and some live loops. Now, these were recorded with a selection of the ribbon mics we've just been talking about. Here's a shaker. And there's some great kind of shaker swells here. And you hear that dullness to it? It sounds like it's not going to be useful, but you can hear just how well in a minute this all sits in a track. We've got a live cabasa just pushing that open hi-hat beat. And this great little metal work that comes, uh, it's a kind of metal percussion instrument that comes from Ghana. A really bright and powerful wood block. And of course, we're in England, a pint glass. When you put them all together, you get this. And we've got these standout parts here on the subway percussion patch. And they all come together to add a really organic feel to the rhythm track throughout this entire piece. Now, don't think that you have to go and buy expensive percussion instruments. One thing I've been obsessed with just recently, when I opened up a shaker and found it contained nothing but some rice, was to actually go and buy some stiff plastic bottles and to fill them with different grains and record them. I'm going to be honest, a lot of the shakers I actually created for about 50p were miles better than the, uh, the ones that you buy in shops for four or five pounds. So just experiment with the stuff around you. The classic one for this was Michael Jackson's Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, where in the background you've got all of this tapping percussion going on, and it's actually actually just a whole series of different bottles and some really clever arrangement of the percussion. Now, once again, we've got a kind of Foley effects loop floating away in the background. Here it is. And it is much more subtle this time, but it's doing exactly the same effect. It's just helping to provide some background ambience. We've also got some live cymbals. Once again, recorded with ribbon mics so that they don't uh, sort of take your hair off. Some additional little extra live hits. Mixed with some synth noises as well. And we've actually got some ride cymbals, uh, some, sorry, some live ride cymbals here. And they're all in there to do one thing, to add some organic feeling to a heavily programmed track. That really can set your electronic music apart. Moving on to the basses now, and we wanted to show you a layering workflow in this part, which is the funkier side in the middle of the track. Now this is actually made up of three bass parts. Here's the first, it's very simple, quite synthetic, and it's mono. Now don't forget there's no third party plugins in this, this is a sample bass patch. That is being joined by a big fat Y Jupiter, Ace, uh, Jupiter 8 patch with the synth set in unison. So four of the voices set on the left, four on the right. It's massive. But it does tend to drift around the stereo image. So here we've actually centered it with that first bass that we heard. And right underneath, we have an analog 808 style sub bass. Now, we've removed some of the sub from the other two bass patches, and when we add them all together, we get this wonderful fat bass sound. 
Now, on the group, we've got a tiny bit of saturation down here, some parallel EQ. This is the dry chain. This is the EQ. So there's just a little lift. Where are we at with that lift? I think it's a uh, wrong patch there. Let's have a look. It's about 62 and a little lift in the upper mids. That's running in parallel, so it's not a serial EQ, so it's quite useful. And a little bit of general compression for the bass group and then the side chain from the kick. <laughs> So these first three processes, the saturation, the parallel EQ and the compressor are just there to bring the bass sound together and then we have a side chain over the top. Now this is actually across the whole group. So we're affecting all of the different bass parts. Now bearing in mind at the beginning we have a different bass sound, we have this square wave sub part. <laughs> Now, once again, that's running with full envelope control. So you have full synthesis control over that bass part. And then later on, we've got some live basses. So at the end of this production, we drop the synth basses and a live bass takes over. It's our five string bass again. It's recorded differently, quite aggressively this time. And it sounds like this. <laughs> You can hear all that fuzz on the lower mid harmonics there. That's deliberate to make it cut through on a busy mix like this. Now, because it's working with a, uh, a kind of guitar solo, now I would like to say that that patch is also MIDI playable as well. I'll show you that in a minute. But having two live style instruments really helps lift this end section. Now, as before, we've included a MIDI playable bass patch of this instrument. This is a pseudo round robin patch and in the higher octaves you've also got a selection of slides, hits and noises. And little bass effects that allow you to program quite realistic bass parts. Now I'm going to mute the live bass and just play you the MIDI version. <laughs> Now we've got both on this arrange page because we thought it would be useful to show you the difference between an actual live performance and a patch doing a similar thing. Also, obviously, you can grab the MIDI patch and make your own bass lines with it, but it is quite interesting to hear the difference. Now, for me, the jury's out onto which one is better. I love the tightness of the program one, but I also love the feel of the live instrument. Now, speaking of live instruments, we also wanted to show you the difference between a live Rhodes and uh, a Rhodes patch here. So these are some live Rhodes recordings. And one thing I want to draw your attention to are these spread chords that we're using. and the way they interplay with the downbeat of the, uh, the main kind of warm accord. So it's a really simple idea. You have a fat warm chord underneath, and then you have exactly the same chord on a higher register, or you can actually change notes on that. It can get really interesting and spread the notes as they actually fall into that chord. And the interplay between the two, particularly if it comes off an acoustic instrument or a real instrument like a Fender Rhodes. Uh, our Fender Rhodes is a Suitcase 73, by the way, in case you were wondering. And that's been put through a chorus pedal as it was recorded with also a touch of auto pan. It yields fantastic results. But we are also using a multi-sample patch doing the same thing up here. Now, when they all come together, Bearing in mind we've got the real roads doing the same spread here, it can be an amazing sound.
Now, this production is chocker full of flourishes like that. And do please go and have a look because the quantize is not on on a great deal of, this, of these parts. And that's what makes this entire piece so organic. Now, there's a gallon of multi-sampled synths in here, including some gorgeous pads. And this one. All designed and programmed specifically for this kind of music, but I'm really conscious of the fact that this video is getting enormously long. So one of the things I want to show you are these uh, synth guitars at the bottom. Here is the, uh, the main part that joins in halfway through on the second breakbeat breakdown. These are actually completely synthetic guitar patches. And they're specifically designed for this kind of staccato playing. Now, as I said earlier on when we were looking at the basses, the guitar solo that comes in is not an audio part, it is a completely playable patch and it's great fun. And just before we round this video off, the very last patch I want to show you sounds weird in isolation. It's a kind of fake Stratocaster. But let me just push it up and play you it in the track. So that's it for this Ableton walkthrough of Trax Beach House. Thank you so much if you've watched all the way up to this point. I really do admire your dedication. I think the best thing I can do now is just play this end section out and you can hear how all of the different elements that we've talked about here come together. <laughs>